Our next example is on gas hydrates. In this work, we are looking at the gas hydrate formation process pictorially shown here. An initial water droplet will have a hydrate film grow upon it, thicken, and ultimately fully convert into a hydrate. These hydrates may agglomerate and plug a pipeline, causing flow assurance issues. In this work, methane hydrate formation and dissociation were studied in the laboratory. This work was published by the Colorado School of Mines in conjunction with Chevron. In these experiments, Conroe crude oil was placed in water. Uh, hydrates were formed under a pressure of 77 bar and 4 degrees Celsius and subsequently dissociated at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Both the FBRM and PVM were placed inside this pressure cell. The motivation behind this study was to understand the hydrate formation and dissociation mechanisms under higher water cut conditions, that is uh, greater than 60% water by volume, as is typically found in older or less profitable wells. Here we have a sequence of PVM images taken at 4 degrees Celsius. Initially, one sees water droplets in the continuous phase of oil. The hydrate film in image B starts to form around the outside of these droplets, and in image C, the hydrates start to agglomerate. Then the temperature is raised to 20 degrees Celsius and these hydrates again to begin to dissociate back down to individual flakes. And finally, the system returns to a new equilibrium with occluded oil droplets. In our next example, FBRM was also used to measure flow assurance in a pipeline. This work was performed by IFP and Total in France. There were two experimental setups, the first of which was an Archimedes loop, which was temperature controlled from 273 to 283 Kelvin. In order to avoid hydrate crushing, no pumps were used. Gas lift was used to regulate the flow. The system had an overall length of 36 meters and an internal diameter of approximately one centimeter. The second experimental setup involved the use of a liar loop, a picture of which is shown here. The liar loop was similarly temperature controlled from 273 to 323 Kelvin. The flow was held constant despite changes in solution viscosity. A Monnier pump was used to regulate this flow. This was a much larger system with an overall length of 140 meters and an internal diameter of nearly 5 centimeters. Looking at the Archimedes loop, Temperature and pressure were monitored from the onset of hydrate formation through to stoppage of flow. Looking here at the temperature, pressure, and mean velocity information, we can couple these factors in order to generate a friction factor, which is shown here in this graph on the right-hand side in purple. And if you look at the FBRM data taken concurrently, we see that there is an increase in the FBRM mean dimension at the same time the friction factor is increased and this is essentially associated with the agglomeration in the system. FBRM can be used to directly monitor the rate and degree of agglomeration and identify conditions where agglomeration is, occurs and plugging is probable. For the liar loop, FBRM was used to characterize the breakage of hydrates under shear. The upper graph shows the temperature and friction factor of the liar loop as a function of time. Initially, there is an emulsion present as shown by the FBRM cord length distribution in the lower left, which is unimodal, with most of the material being under 10 microns in dimension. As the friction factor increases, here at time 180 minutes, we see that the distribution is now bimodal, this indicates that not only do we have the initial emulsion, but we also have the formation of hydrates. This continues on at time 240 minutes. In the case of the liar loop, a high level of shear is generated in order to keep the constant velocity of the system. This shear results in the breakage of hydrates. We are able to track that very effectively with the FBRM as illustrated by the difference between the two distributions measured at 240 and 320 minutes where we see a clear reduction in the amount of material above 100 microns in dimension.